Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. Let's look ahead to the upcoming ECB interest rate decision taking place on Thursday, the 6th of June. And by and large, markets are expecting to see a 25 basis points rate cut. And the reason for it is that pretty much every single member of the ECB has come out and told us that's what they're going to do. So in no uncertain terms, they have laid the groundwork for this decision. It's not necessarily going to be a big surprise if we do see them cut interest rates, uh, but there's still going to be plenty to unpack and likely plenty of volatility around this meeting. So let's get into it. First and foremost, these are the expectations for the upcoming meeting and the, the following meetings after that. So according to the ICON platform, 96% chance that we're going to see a rate cut on uh, Thursday. So of course, that means that by and large, if that happens, the market reaction is probably not going to be too notable in itself. So where could the volatility happen? Well, we can also see later on in the year, if we're looking at, say, uh, September, that's where markets deem it essentially a coin toss between uh, keeping rates steady or cutting interest rates again. And then if we look at the back end of the year, uh, we're looking for December. So 31% chance that we see a 25 basis point cut. Another 11% chance that we see 50 basis, so four essentially cuts this year, and even a 1% chance that we see five this year. So highly unlikely. And essentially what that means is there is an outside chance, essentially, if you add all of those together. So it's around about 43% chance that we actually see three rate cuts this year. Uh, and so I think the outlier expectations, so the expectations for rate cuts beyond this meeting are probably likely to be a more a driver of market volatility and sentiment than the action itself. And that means a lot of the moves are going to come around expectations or commentary, uh, forward looking commentary from uh, ECB members, the likes of uh, Christine Lagarde, and also the projections that we're going to have in terms of inflation projections, in terms of growth projections. So here's the comparison between uh, the likes of the ECB and some of its other peers. You can see most notably the ECB is at the bottom of this pile. So rates already relatively low because as you can see here, we're starting from a low base in negative territory uh, prior to this period of monetary tightening. And therefore now we've seen that rise in terms of interest rates, uh, but rates are still relatively low compared to its peers. So if we do see the ECB cutting interest rates and that comes ahead of some of these other central banks, then there's grounds for a potential carry trade coming into play, uh, which would potentially weaken the euro uh, and also potential for uh, outflows from Europeans into assets with higher yields elsewhere around the world. The likes of, say, uh, US treasuries suddenly uh, appear even more attractive uh, as an investment for someone within the eurozone. And also the potential for people to look towards European stocks uh, in a beneficial way because they start to think, well, interest rates are lower. We're going to see economic growth uh, powering forward in the eurozone. And certainly we have actually seen uh, some stronger data coming out of the eurozone after what has been a, a tough period in particular. We've seen some upside uh, coming for some of the surveys out of Germany. We've seen some strength in terms of the uh, manufacturing PMIs of late trying to recover ground after, again, what has been a particularly tough time. Wages remain uh, elevated, um, but inflation has been relatively low. We've started to see it move towards the upside, um, but that's something we'll get onto. So these are the projections from the last time around. We only see four projections provided per year. March was the last time. June is the uh, next time. And therefore, it will provide another thing for markets to re really be looking out for. And bear in mind that there's question marks around about whether the ECB are particularly accurate when it comes to their projections, right? And the fact that they may not be accurate doesn't mean that we can completely ignore it because the idea that they see inflation moving higher than they had previously thought next year or lower than they previously thought, that informs us on how they are expecting to adapt their monetary policy in response to that. 
so first and foremost, we'll look at this. What's the expectation? Uh, well, the expectation was that we're going to see uh, a strengthening in terms of GDP, real GDP, particularly in 2025, with not really too much happening this year, 0.6%. In terms of inflation, expected to remain above target 2.3% uh, and then down to target in 2025. Now, it's notable that we have seen, let me just move to forward. This was a breakdown. So bearing in mind, we should see this once again uh, for the upcoming release. So if you look into the release itself, you can see a breakdown of the projections from other entities. And we have just recently seen the upgrading of expectations for inflation from the European Commission, they expect to see uh, inflation around about the mid twos for this year and around about the low twos, 2.1% for next year. So essentially, if they're looking at, say, 25 for this year, 2.1 for next year, then they think that we're going to be there or thereabouts in terms of inflation but we might still remain above target. Crucially, as you can see here, the view of all of these is that we're going to see inflation above target for 2024. So essentially, the ECB are going to have to cut interest rates ahead of a return to target. And that looks likely to be the case because they're not at target and they're cutting interest rates, well, very likely to, according to commentary that they have come out with and market expectations. Uh, here's a host of other metrics in terms of projections. Notably, unemployment expected to remain flat as we move forward and that growth is expected to come in 2025 and 2026, like I mentioned, with a particular uh, ramping up in terms of exports and a particular ramping up in terms of uh, government consumption uh, going forward. So potentially government spending to ramp up when we see inflation uh, driven down, it gives them the opportunity to come in with a more expansive fiscal measures going forward. In terms of the breakdown for inflation, 2.57 for headline inflation right now. I don't expect us to see really much disinflation from here on in. Uh, you can see here that we do have the August reading as 0.54 that's going to drop out. So maybe in a few months time, we might see inflation move a little bit lower, but it's probably going to only uh, make up for the, the downside, uh, sorry, the 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 gains that we see in the meanwhile. So I think we're likely to stay around the mid twos for inflation this year um and so ultimately that means that the bank of uh, sorry the ecb are going to have to cut interest rates against that backdrop and so where markets are talking about outside possibilities of four rate cuts this year five rate cuts this year in my mind it's not going to happen i think it's highly likely that we see two rate cuts and at a push three now, because like I'm showing you here, inflation is likely to be moving higher as we move throughout much of this year. Certainly, you can see that big negative November reading, you know, the back end of this year, we're going to see significant uh, reflation coming into play around that time, just at the time when people are talking about that potential for a third rate cut from the ECB later on in the year. And so that brings the basis for markets to become a little bit more hawkish in relation to their current expectations. But whether we see Christine Lagarde coming out with comments to essentially make markets believe one way or another. That's beside the point. I mean, I don't think that they're going to, she's going to lay out the July rate cut. And that has been uh, speculated around recently. I think it's likely they take a breather after a rate cut this time around. But I don't think that they're going to be talking about, we're going to see three this year. Uh, we're going to see two this year because it's going to be data dependent and the data around the back end of the year, in my mind, is likely to essentially put them off that. But I don't necessarily think that we will see them uh, signal uh, that move right away. This is a idea of why the 10 years uh, are particularly important. As you can see here, the, the deterioration of uh, the ECB deposit rate comes alongside the deterioration of the 10-year yield and like for like the, the rebound has for interest rates has also driven up yields. And so if we're expecting to see interest rates move towards the downside, then the 10-year yield is an interesting tool for us to be able to track over the near term because it gauges market expectations for interest rates. And it's the kind of thing that you can plot against other markets. So one thing that's notable here is the 10 year against the DAX. Um, I have inverted uh, the 10 year. Um, so ultimately, the trajectory that it has been on uh, 
um, we can see here that this sort of upward trajectory in terms of the DAX comes despite uh, a breakdown in terms of this yield. So a reversal, the rally in terms of yields uh, hasn't essentially really done too much damage to the DAX. And in part, that might be due to the fact that essentially the weakness within the region has led people to believe that soon enough we're going to see uh, the ECB pushing forward uh, with some pretty loose monetary policy. And so when we do see that potential reversal, so downside move in terms of yields in the eurozone, that can provide us with the basis for expected further upside in terms of equity markets. Um, for the time being, you know, does that give us cause for concerns, this divergence between the two? Yes, possibly. But then we have managed to get through the period where we're waiting for the rate cuts and, and it looks like we're on the cusp of seeing one. Uh, so that should really embolden uh, the bulls for the time being. In terms of some of the markets to watch out for, here is the uh, German DAX. We can see here that we've been pulling back of late uh, and the four hour chart essentially highlights that. We're seeing this 76.4 FIB retracement, the 61.8 FIB retracement is selling off once again. So near term, we're seeing some downside as we head in towards this meeting. Like I said, in terms of market uh, sort of shocks around this, I don't think the rate cut is going to provide a shock because it's essentially priced in. And so the shocks could come in terms of projections. And I think the projections are likely going to point towards elevated inflation for the time being and for this year. Uh, and the potential for elevated GDP compared to what they had previously thought as well, uh, both of which point towards the possibility of maybe two instead of three rate cuts this year. So we could see a bit of risk off play coming in for the time being. Um, but ultimately, we're coming back down towards this sort of trend line that I've drawn on here. Um, I do see this as a retracement phase. And so, yes, while we're seeing some sort of downside for the time being, and we might even see a bit of downside around the initial announcement of maybe higher inflation projections, higher growth projections, things like that. If that comes to fruition, you know, I think that near term downside has to be viewed through the prism of the wider trend. And the wider trend points towards this uh, pullback being a likely retracement. Uh, before the bulls come back into play and you can see that the strength of that rally coming into this move has not been matched by the strength of the, the sell-off it's been more gradual in nature which to me generally points towards the potential for a bullish continuation uh, another good example of that is exactly what's happened here at the back end of 2023 sharp rally and then this gradual move lower and ultimately once you see that breakout through the price swing high then you're on that next move higher so the price swing high on this occasion is currently up here at 11852 but if we do sell down through this 11 uh, so 18384 um then we'd be looking at this area of 187 as your swing high that needs to be broken to essentially end this pullback phase but for the time being things uh, a little bit bearish as they're playing out on the dax in terms of euro dollar we can see here that on the daily time frame we have got this bearish trend in play uh, but the euro has actually been staging somewhat of a recovery driven heavily by uh, the sell-off in the us dollar the us dollar the weakest of the major currency pairs uh, uh, major currencies over the course of may and we're seeing that continue once again here with that push up towards this 1089 resistance certainly if we were to see uh, a more hawkish tone and the possibility of them essentially ruling out a, a whole raft of rate cuts this year or coming out with higher inflation and growth forecasts that could push us through this 1089 and potentially see us in this next leg higher but for the term time being that is the key crossroads uh, that we either reverse from and sort of reject or break through and that's going to give us a good idea of where we go from here in terms of if they do come out with something uh, quite dovish in nature, uh, the, the thing to watch is, you know, what would we want to potentially trade this against? And I would say, you know, if we're looking for a, a central bank that is coming out with comments that might point towards the possibility of them seeing three rate cuts this year, for example, uh, or being very comfortable where inflation is and saying that they're focusing more on, on growth and less so on inflation, things like that, then we'd be looking for it to deteriorate potentially against something that is strengthening off the back of a relatively hawkish stance from the central bank and that is the rba with expectations that they're going to keep rates steady over the course of this year and so we've got this bearish trend playing out 
of late over the near term, we're rallying back up towards trendline resistance. I think unless we break up through that trendline, then uh, the bears are likely to remain in charge. That's 1634. If you look at that wider time frame, we can see here that we have got this bearish trend uh, that's playing out here. And so, yes, we've seen a little bit of a rally coming into play here, but we're rolling over once again. And so if we were to see some uh, a more sort of dovish tone uh, taken by the ECB, once we see that rate cut, if that's what happens, uh, then this looks like an interesting one to potentially target for the near term. So keep an eye out for Euro Aussie uh, if we were to see uh, the ECB coming out with comments that would give us greater confidence that we're going to see a third rate cut at the back end of this year. But like I say, I do think it's likely that we are going to see a big focus on expectations going forward rather than what's happening this time. I don't think markets are going to get too crazy if they see a rate cut this time around because it's essentially priced in, 93% chance they're currently being priced in. And so where's the volatility going to come? It's with those expectations. It's those forward-looking comments from Christine Lagarde and the expectations in terms of inflation and growth and what people are going to glean in terms of how that might impact monetary policy going forward. So a key meeting ahead, certainly a big one for traders to be looking out for. But maybe, just maybe, that long-awaited interest rate cut might not necessarily be the big driver of volatility within this meeting. It might be some of the other elements that come around it.